So welcome. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Good morning from San Jose, California, and good evening um, in India, uh, Dr. Pri, Dr. Kakar, and uh, Dr. Sharma. Um, so with us today, we have uh, Dr. Sharma. Um, Dr. Sharma is um, currently working with the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research as a senior research associate to work upon impact of misuse of antibiotics in de dentistry and its consequences leading to antibiotic resistance. His overall experience in field of healthcare uh, spans more than a decade. He has written over 40 scientific articles in renowned international and national journals and his articles on COVID-19 and is impact on medical tourism, dentistry, implantology, the role of HCQ as in COVID, the correlation between BCG vaccine and COVID-19 mortality and forensic connection of COVID-19 are just a few of his contributions to understand COVID-19 from a multidisciplinary angle. He has also started a voluntary help desk with a team of doctors for citizens of New Delhi to help them procure medical help, medicine, counseling, and oxygen support during the second wave. He firmly believes that COVID-19 is constantly bringing new challenges to the table and looking at the larger picture, it will definitely give us very important lessons about the importance of health and healthcare preparations globally. That was just a short introduction, uh, doctor, because your accomplishments uh, are, are many, and uh, these are just the few highlights. So um, we're going to be talking about mucormycosis, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. It's uh, also known as uh, the black fungus. So all of a sudden, um, we're hearing a lot more about black fungus these days. So what exactly is it, doctor? Uh, first of all, uh, you just overdid the introduction. I'm just saying that uh, Abhimanyu is there with you was sufficient enough. Now, uh, coming uh, to the to, to the reason for which we are here, uh, mucormycosis is something which has been there, which has been uh, documented and has experienced by medical fraternity for decades and decades. It is just that uh, there is a hype uh, to the or, or the interest in mucormycosis because. Uh, a sudden rise in number of cases, uh, which is happening secondary to COVID-19 infection. Uh, now, to start uh, with the introduction, because I definitely don't need an introduction, but uh, mucormycosis does. So it is basically a fungal infection. As we know that generally there are uh, three kinds of microbial infection, which is bacterial infection, viral infection, and fungal infection. So bacteria are generally both good variety and bad varieties. Uh, good are there to help us in our routine, virus are mostly direct infection, you know, whereas a uh, fungal infection, wherever it happens, it is mostly an opportunistic infection. It attacks wherever it knows that it is going to certainly cause an infection. So now what is happening is because of COVID-19 and multiple reasons, it will get interesting as I will start to discuss more about it. Uh, what is happening is there are multiple reasons, multiple changes which are happening in the body due to COVID-19. And that is kind of opening a gateway for this particular fungus, uh, mucormycosis, or as you just called it, black fungus, to get into a body and infect a particular person. So um, I, I read a little bit about, uh, about uh, some of the, the, I don't know, ideal breeding grounds, I guess, for uh, black fungus. So it's being correlated with uh, diabetes, for example, also compromised immunity. But what is, uh, but why is it suddenly happening in secondary um, COVID-19 cases? Okay, so uh, uh, the cases of mucormycosis were there during the first wave in India and globally as well. Uh, what I have read uh, that mostly the Western world has experienced other fungal infections such as candidiasis and aspergillosis, whereas the cases of mucormycosis in India were reported in the first wave as well. However, in the second wave, we are uh, encountering more number of cases. 
now what is happening i i just read uh, about it and i would like to share it with you that uh, what is happening that covid 19 is creating kind of a recipe uh, for mucormycosis because if you have understood or read a bit about covid 19 what it is doing the first thing it is doing is that it is interfering and impacting our respiratory system right mm -hmm. so that is weakening of the respiratory system that creates an easy entry for the fungus the other thing which is happening in covid 19 is that it is increasing the clotting tendency it is impacting the blood vessels the third mm -hmm. thing it is doing is that it is increasing the level of iron or ferritin in the body right so what is happening that all these are making the situation or condition more favorable for mucormycosis to attack a particular person for example uh, mucormycosis is in the air so i might be breathing few spores but i may not get infected touch wood because my immunity is fine i have not been infected by covid 19 whereas if somebody sitting next to me who has experienced covid 19 and is having this compromised situation may get this infection so covid 19 itself is a first and a very major cause of uh, causing mucormycosis to the patient now there are other contributing factors secondary factors are misuse of medications i will not say uh, that doctors are doing it but to be very honest uh, in india what is happening many people are uh, believing and doing self medication so misuse of steroids steroids are known to reduce inflammation it was supposed to be used in covid 19 to control the cytokine storm and how it is doing that by suppressing or compromising the immunity immunity is our defense system so imagine if you don't have a defensive army or if your entire army is sleeping it will be very easy to attack you right e even a smaller nation can attack anybody so that is what is happening the third thing is misuse of antibiotics people are taking lot and lot of antibiotics so what is happening is that that antibiotic is suppressing the useful bacteria as well so when the useful bacteria is suppressed it becomes much easier for mucormycosis for that say or any fungal disease to attack and show its impact on any human body yeah yeah i also read um and this is maybe not in in your list but um so with patients who are on a ventilator with the oxygen uh, there's a moist environment uh, in which the the fungus uh, can thrive and then you have in addition to that the decreased uh, immunity response or ability of the patient and so a fungus has chance to 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 settle and and, and thrive um absolutely see uh, all sort of fungus are we have been there since before us the fungus bacteria have been there so it is there in the air it is there in damp surfaces it is there on the rotten food it is there on the dirty linen it's been there everywhere so apart from other factors which we have just mentioned a very crucial and important aspect which people need to think about is overuse or improper use of oxygen support because what has happened if if you are aware in the second wave there was an oxygen crisis right mm -hmm. so, so the, the the demand of oxygen was much more than the supply and to get proper uh, oxygen from external sources it took a lot of time now mm -hmm. just to give a just to give a small introduction oxygen is basically divided for use into medical oxygen and industrial oxygen right that is maybe scientific people know but the layman does not know for them oxygen is something which they need to survive yes so in at the time of crisis what they ran behind was oxygen they did not know what oxygen they are asking for or getting was actually a medical grade oxygen or an industrial oxygen because the categorization and the classification of both are much different you know we don't need precise grade we don't need to ensure uh, the sterilization and disinfection of oxygen when we ask about the industrial grade so one thing which probably can be blamed is uh, misuse of industrial grade oxygen at the time of crisis yeah. so that can be one reason the second reason is uh, for example uh, if somebody who is not a medical practitioner right now we are not talking about the ventilator or hospital support right mm -hmm. now we are talking about people who tried or thought that they will get cured at home they thought mm -hmm. they'll get oxygen cylinders at home and they would be fine 
so i have seen this i know that there were there were families of four to five members and uh, they just wanted support in form of oxygen supply i asked them that i can i can suggest you to go to a particular hospital but they said no we cannot afford hospital or we don't want the hospital mm-hmm. thing we will be fine we just need oxygen so now we do not know all the four or five members were using the same mask or they were changing the mask on daily basis oxygen cannot be taken in dry form so there is a way there is a nozzle attached to the cylinder in which water is there which uh, humidifies the oxygen so that we can breathe in now we do not know whether they were changing that water on daily basis or not so there are there are a lot of reasons or certain possibilities that can that might have aggravated uh, this fungal infection now talking about the hospital I definitely i know that uh, all the doctors understand the importance of medical grade oxygen so that definitely cannot be the possibility but yes if somebody goes on a ventilator there is a tube inside uh, the body to give constant oxygen support that get, that gets infected and this is this is a very common thing this is not exclusive to covid this mm-hmm. is not exclusive to to covid so uh, yes oxygen uh, the demand of oxygen in covid 19 can be blamed it can, it can be one of the reasons for increased incidence of uh, mucomycosis ma'am wow the things i didn't know um as we all understand um, covid 19 is caused by a virus which transmits or spreads through air droplets uh, for the fungus what is the mode of transmission Okay, so as uh, I have already mentioned, uh, I'll I'll say it quickly that this fungus, the spores are already there in the environment. It is there in my room. It is there in everybody's room. It is in the air. It is on the damp surfaces. It is on it is on the soil, right? And daily we might get exposure to this fungus, but because our immunity is strong, we are able to deal with it. So what is happening? Unlike COVID nineteen, how COVID nineteen is spread? is through if somebody is infected uh, for example if i am infected with covid 19 and i am sitting with somebody and both of us are not wearing mask whatever air i will exhale the virus will sit over the air, the particles and that other person can inhale and get infected that is not the case with mucomycosis mucomycosis needs direct contact in the form of touch of surface or direct contact with the vesputum and all those reasons so what is happening as we suggested or we have discussed that uh, misuse of oxygen is one reason improper use of humidifier or mask is one reason now one thing i was sitting and thinking that uh, during the first wave in india if uh, uh, priyanjali and dr dhruv must be knowing it very well the trend or or, or uh, the suggestion was that if in a family of four somebody is infected he will go into isolation in a government made quarantine center he will not stay at home whereas in second wave what is happening people are going into quarantine in their home now for example if there is there is a house of four to five rooms and one person is infected he will be isolated in that particular room right now nobody will be going into his room he is already ill he is already not strengthened enough so we are not sure whether he is taking proper care of the cleanliness in the room whether he is changing the the linen or the 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 pillow covers or not so so the chances of somebody getting uh, infected with any kind of fungus plus mucomycosis increases yeah oh wow so how do you suspect that you may be infected with the black fungus with the mucomycosis what are f- some of the first signs what should you be looking for okay so uh, mucomycosis usually uh the this particular infection it can attack uh, the face the face part is called as roc that is rhino orbito uh, cerebral so this particular uh, mode of uh, mucomycosis infect the nose the sinuses uh, part of dentition the maxilla eyes and the brain the other variety is cutaneous in which this particular fungus infects the skin another mode of infection is uh, respiratory where it particularly or predominantly affects the lung and the last one is uh, gi gastro in which it, it it affects our digestive system so depending upon where uh, the fungus has taken the first rest and then attacked 
uh, the symptoms would be dif different. Like for example, if it if it is an ROM infection, the signs initially would be um, discomfort in the mouth. There will be swelling in the gums. Uh, the patient or the person will feel heaviness or pain in the nose or or sinus region, pain behind the eye, blurring of vision, uh, delusion, delirium. These are the signs which happens in the uh, RO, ROC uh, variety of mucomycosis. For example, uh, the fungus has decided to go and settle in the lungs. The patient will feel uh, difficulty in breathing. Uh, if you have observed, uh, there were cases in which, as we all know, that SpO2 uh, is supposed to reduce during the COVID infection. So we must have heard few news is that in which patient had a drop in SpO2 during the COVID infection. He got recovered. He was absolutely fine for 8 to 10 or maybe 15 days. And there was a sudden drop in SpO2. And the reason was unexplained. So what I can guess that a secondary infection of mucormycosis can be a reason. A respiratory mucormycosis can be a reason for a certain drop of SPO2. So these are the signs one is supposed to look for. Depending upon these signs, one should not be rest assured once he is done with COVID-19 that uh, now there is a green flag for me. He still needs to be careful, not just for days, not just for a week, but uh, for a few months. And if, unfortunately, the patient is a known diabetic patient or is mm -hmm. an immunocompromised patient or somebody who has had a history of organ transplant is last one year or in any uh, form of uh, chemotherapy, it needs to be really watchful for this secondary infection. And is it curable, doctor? Is there a cure for uh, the black fungus? Okay, yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, it depends upon the stage in which it has been recognized or the patient or person has paid attention to and reported to a doctor. So depending upon uh, whether it is a respiratory or a rhino mode or uh, whether it is a gastro, uh, the, the, the treatment uh, changes, you know. Uh, in case of respiratory, it is mostly drug-based treatment, whereas uh, the rhino mode, uh, which, it, which impacts the nose, maxillofacial area, orbital, and uh, the brain mostly, uh, surgical method methodology is uh, more advised and preferred because in this way, this fungus is more aggressive. So yeah. to answer your question, I will say it depends, one, how watchful the patient is for all the sign and symptom, how quickly he is reporting to the doctor uh, rather than just, uh, you know, trying that th this will suffice. This is, this is just uh, because of uh, the COVID I had. He or she should definitely see a doctor if anything happens when he recovers from COVID. So yes, definitely it is curable, but uh, with an asterisk mark that when the patient has reported to the doctor. Yeah, wow. And then um, I think we kind of talked about this already a little bit, but is there a way that you can avoid being uh, infected by this fungal disease? We talked a little bit, it's, it's not really contagious, but it spreads. It spreads easily. Um, so, so what can we do to avoid being infected with uh, mucormycosis? Okay, so now talking specifically about uh, mucormycosis or a fungal infection, because now we cannot restrict just to black fungus. Now we have black, we have white, we have yellow, and tomorrow we might have green or red. So mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, secondary fungal infection, there can be three different cadre of uh, prevention or precaution that can be taken. One is at the hospital level. One is mm -hmm. at the level when a patient is infected with the COVID. And the third one is one, the person is recovered from COVID, right? So talking about the precaution for this fungal infection that one needs to take at hospital base, that is more of the doctor's or hospital's responsibility, to be very honest, uh, is that, uh, you know, the, the use of ventilator, the, the use of uh, ventilation or intubation tubes, uh, this should be proper at the hospital setup. Uh, the patient should be, should or should not need ICU or if in ICU care, he should be taken proper care of, proper use of antibiotics, uh, proper use of steroids. Steroids are supposed to be tapered properly, cannot uh, be stopped abruptly. So these mm -hmm. are the precautions which are need to be taken at at the hospital level. Now, if somebody is infected with COVID and at home, as we have already discussed, usually or uh, by the virtue of guidelines, they're supposed to go for isolation. So when they are at isolation, they have to ensure hygiene in their environment. They have to change, they have to ensure that the linen, linen 
and the pillow covers are uh, changed properly they are taking they are bathing they are changing their clothes uh, their nails uh, should not uh, be be large of a size that it can entrap dust okay mm -hmm. the oxygen which they are taking if at home they have to ensure they are taking medical grade oxygen they are changing the water in humidifier they are changing the mask uh, periodically and the third thing is when the somebody is recovered from covid he have to take care of his immunity right because it is not the immunity is not just for a virus or covid in particular the immunity is there to save us from millions of diseases so they have to take care of their immunity even after covid 19 they have to maintain the hygiene they have to avoid uh, doing gardening because gardens or soil are a major source of black fungus or mucormycosis so uh, they can very easily avoid uh, exposure to dust when they are going out now once they are recovered they have to use mask they have to maintain hand hygiene and as i have said a very important is they have to avoid exposure to soil touching soil okay it's not easy like ventilation is that a factor as well uh, because here in the we, we talk about for COVID-19, if, if you're in uh, inside, you have to have ventilation. So good airflow, is that a factor that plays into effect in trying to avoid uh, the fungus or, or is that just not really relevant? Uh, unfortunately, uh, fungus has this talent to grow, you know, on damp or soil surfaces. Like mm -hmm. uh, for example, the COVID-19 virus needs a support, okay? Mm -hmm. It can infect a person A and then to replicate, it needs a body of person B. That is not the case with fungus. Okay, yes, ventilation definitely will help. It will take care of the fungus spores in the air. But what about the damp surfaces, the linen? Virus, we know that it will die if it is on, on, on a table surface it is, or if it, or it, it, it is on a textbook, but fungus may grow. So I cannot ensure that if somebody takes a proper care of ventilation, uh, there is a foolproof method of uh, saving us from uh, this fungal infection. That's, yeah, absolutely. Um, so if a patient suspects that something is amiss, um, is there a special doctor? Is there a specialist they need to see or is every doctor trained uh, well enough to recognize the symptoms firsthand? Where should they go? When how would they get their diagnosis confirmed by a medical expert? Yeah, so definitely by the virtual, uh, by the virtue of medical training that happens worldwide, uh, anybody, anybody who has a trained degree in medicine can properly diagnose or should mm -hmm. be able to diagnose mucomycosis. So at the primary or first line of contact, they can reach out to their, uh, you know, the family physician or anybody for that say, and now then, depending upon the diagnosis, uh, that what variety of mucomycosis it is, the physician can refer the patient to a specialist. Or mm -hmm. if, if a patient is getting a specific symptom, for example, if, if, a patient, if a patient is there and he is getting blood in, in his sputum, so that has mm -hmm. more to do with the respiratory system. So he can either go to a general physician or a pulmonologist for that case. If somebody is having difficulty um, in, uh, in vision or having pain in the face region. So he mm -hmm. can go to a ENT specialist or ophthalmologist for that case. Uh, mm -hmm. mucomyco mucomycosis is known to cause black spots uh, in the gums. It is known to cause necrosis of the gums and uh, uh, the alveolar bone. So they can even go to their dentist for that case. And then depending upon their expertise, they will do certain tests you know, certain investigations, certain uh, radiological investigation to diagnose it from uh, provisional disease to a definitive disease. And then accordingly, they will treat the patient. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we, the next question we already talked about a little bit as well, but just to recap. So what are direct and indirect measures to prevent the onset of this disease? So direct measures, uh, as we have uh, discussed, is uh, most likely during the COVID period uh, mm -hmm. when somebody is infected with the COVID. So the direct measure is taking care of the fact 
uh, that uh, the oxygen that they are taking is of uh, medical grade, uh, that uh, they are changing the water in the humidifier, that they are changing the mask. If there are multiple people using the same cylinder, there should be individually dedicated masks for everybody. Uh, they should not try to treat themselves at home because what is happening that if there's a family of five and one got COVID in first uh, wave, they have their prescription and the other members are using the same prescription in the second wave, thinking that he got treated with the same, he's feeling fine. And so now they do not understand that different body responds differently, depending upon the immunity of the person, depending upon the viral load, the age of the patient, uh, the existing comorbidities of the patient. So the, the doses of antibiotic or, or steroid can be very different from uh, a father to a son. So they should not try to self-medicate. They should take proper care to avoid the possibility of secondary infection. And the indirect measures, uh, as we have suggested, is uh, hygiene. Hygiene is very important. Even after COVID, they should avoid uh, exposure to soil. They should maintain hygiene at home. And very important factor is uh, changing of linen and uh, yeah. pillow covers. Yeah. Is there any... Um research or any evidence already about how it impacts children? Uh, yes, so mucomycosis uh, is known to happen in children, but uh, the literature which is available so far is that uh, fungal infection or specifically mucomycosis happens to those children who are immunocompromised because of any congenital disease or uh, they are on chemotherapy for any uh, kind of blood cancer. So because of these uh, factors, their immunity goes down and it becomes easy for fungus to, uh, to attack them. Um, mm -hmm. We have recently uh, noticed or noted the first case of uh, black virus in a three-year-old in Gujarat, India. So yes, it is happening. Uh, now the thing is the dilemma uh, here or cash 22 situation here is the it is a still a, a matter of question, the, the impact of COVID-19 on children, on pediatric patients is still uh, in, the, in the basket of concern. So we, we really do not know. To be very honest, uh, it will still take some time to be very sure and certain that if COVID is happening in children, mucormycosis definitely can. But uh, definitely parents need to be watchful uh, if uh, their offspring is catching COVID-19. Uh, even though rarely, but if they are, if it, if it is happening for them, they should watch for secondary symptoms in uh, pediatric patient. So to uh, to uh, conclude it in one line, we cannot deny uh, that uh, mucomycosis won't happen to pediatric patient. It uh, definitely can happen. Wow. Um, um, lastly, maybe any word of caution uh, for us all. And uh, I, I have. Um, Maybe a question my, myself, um, in, in some of the literature, um, it, there seems to be a correlation also between diabetes patients uh, and uh, mucormycosis. With diabetes spreading, it's a, it's a global phenomenon um, in here in the United States. Um, I don't know what the rate is of people uh, being diagnosed with diabetes, but it's definitely uh, going up instead of going down. So, so that that in itself is 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 already um, not good right now. But now with the correlation between diabetes and mucormycosis, it, it sounds like it might spread and be a global phenomenon. Uh, you mentioned it in the beginning that there are cases not just in India but uh, worldwide. So. Any word of caution specifically to, I, I, I don't know, is it nutrition to curb diabetes and be more uh, protected against uh, fungal diseases? I, I, I don't know if there is any correlation at all, but that was just something that popped up in my mind right now as we were talking. Okay. Okay. So uh, as I said, uh, that the clinical presentation of COVID-19 prepares a recipe for uh, mucomycosis. I would mm -hmm. just add on that diabetes turns it into a feast for mucomycosis. Mm -hmm. uh, the relation between diabetes and mucomycosis is a very well and long established uh, scientific phenomena. 
uh, because basically what happens in diabetes is the immunity is compromised so it gives uh, the fungus an opportunity or a chance to attack that particular patient now what is happening uh, in covid 19 when we relate a, a triangular situation there is covid 19 there is diabetes and there is mucomycosis so what is happening that covid 19 itself is making by the virtue of its presentation uh, its impact on the respiratory system its impact on the blood vessel and the iron which are which are important for mucomycosis to grow in the body the definitive depletion in the immunity uh, in a diabetic patient it make it much much easier for mucomycosis to grow now what is happening uh, uh, during the covid 19 we have to use a lot of steroids because we still do not have a def definitive management uh, or a drug to treat i am sorry am i am i still there yeah yes yeah so we still as we still don't have a definitive manage to treat covid uh, to take care of cytokine storm we have to use steroid so that steroids Uh, by the virtue of their functioning they are also known to raise the sugar level now imagine somebody who is already diabetic is taking a steroids for covid 19 that is steroid is also raising the blood sugar level so it turns it into a vicious cycle right so it is very important for uh, even for those who are not yet infected with diabetes who don't have diabetes is to take care of their health and their blood sugar levels and that is very easy to attain you know uh, it is very easily done uh, by the virtue of their proper nutrition by virtue of workout lifestyle and reducing stress uh, one of a very important factor is if they'll stop watching news for more than 5 10 minutes or a gross update Uh, their blood sugar levels will not shoot up <laughs> as much as it is happening yes absolutely yeah. uh thank you i don't know uh dr dr kaker or dr data do you have any additional questions or remarks i think dr manju has uh, answered almost everything you know which can come up uh, in, in this discussion and it has been a wonderful you know wonderful of has been i've been so kind of him joining us today for mm -hmm. the for the for the one important topic you know i think this this required some sort of verification and uh, we can put this in public domain and it will really help us a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, there there's one point i want to uh, make before we conclude if i can if i'm allowed yeah. to please mm -hmm. yeah please, please so okay. yeah so what is happening if 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 you are going through if we're talking about the news there's a lot of fuss about uh, anti fungal medicine you know that uh, people need it people need it uh, if i have to give one message uh, one uh, very important one liner message uh, it is that uh, this infection mucomycosis if it is happening uh, in the nose eye and the brain system it needs surgical intervention if it is involving your maxilla it is involving your uh, nose your sinus your orbit it involves surgical intervention so as a patient do not push or pressurize your doctor to treat you only with the medication medication is a line of choice when it is respiratory or cutaneous mostly but when it attacks uh, your gi system uh, the digestive system or the rhino or beto uh, cerebral system surgical intervention is first line of choice because what happens that uh, this particular fungus attacks on uh, the blood vessels right and then it causes necrosis mm -hmm. and all the antifungals uh, which we are, which are to be given are mostly given through intravenous route so they are supposed to reach the site through the blood now when there is necrosis the blood supply itself is compromised it becomes very difficult for the drug to reach and this fungus is spread very rapidly after a moment of time and uh, it it's very the brain the eye they are very vital organ they are very important so uh, please consider surgical intervention it is very important uh, because this is the only way to increase or enhance the prognosis of this disease thank you thank you doctor uh, dr data any last remarks before we sign off this was a great session and i hope uh, this podcast comes out as a really informative um, resource for a lot of people here and also uh, for our friends in california so uh, this will be also very useful for 
our patients uh, with whom we are starting to work in Uganda uh, because Arokya is now uh, dealing with women who may have cancer in Uganda. And uh, since the population itself that we are dealing with is so susceptible to such infections, I think uh, this resource will be very helpful for the healthcare workers even there. So we'll try to get this uh, translated also with our local team, OmniMet, mm -hmm. and uh, spread this amongst the healthcare workers there. Okay, thank you. So, so uh, for that point of view, talking about Arogya, as you know that uh, you started uh, with uh, helping people uh, with cancer. Now, cancer is being treated surgically and with chemotherapy. So, chemotherapy is known uh, to cause immunosuppression. Now, unfortunately, if any cancer patient gets COVID-19, it, it, it kinds of uh, increases the chance of that particular patient to get mucormycosis by many fold, unfortunately. So people who are uh, already dealing with cancer on chemotherapy, whether they have got COVID-19 or not, they are immunocompromised and they need to take care of the facts which we have discussed and specifically hygiene around them uh, to save themselves from uh, any kind of fungal diseases and mucormycosis uh, specific. Yeah, that's a great message. Thank you. Okay, it was very nice meeting you. My pleasure. Thank you for the very informative